Hurrah, right, we are in. Getting carried away with a deep conversation. I looked up and it's one o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody. So good to see the people here. Ah, oh, fantastic. Seeing some wonderful people turn out. I'll see you. Julie's here, Ivan's here. Gina, again, thank you very much for being here. My pronunciation on this is going to be wrong, but I want to say Cara or Ciara. You can correct me on my pronunciation, please do. Good, up, see you too. Really appreciated that you're here. Fantastic. We're just going to give it 30 seconds just to see if anyone else is turning up. Like Kira, thank you very much. Kira, thank you for being here. Very appreciated. Let's make sure as we're just waiting for any last people to turn up that we are setting ourselves up for success. It is 101. Let's get the phones on flight mode. Zero distractions. We have a drink. Regret to advise this is lukewarm tea. It's as good as it's going to get right now. And we have a nice blank piece of paper in front of us ready to go. So on that piece of paper at the top, you are going to write keepers. These are the things that you want to remember. Here at Sticky Learning at MBM, this is what we refer to the reminders. So when you read back through those notes, it's going to support your new thinking, your new thoughts, and that new learning to stay in place for a much longer period of time. So let's dive into this. Day three, day three of the PDP session. Welcome to Sticky Learning Lunches with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. We are the leadership development and soft skills provider for the grocery and manufacturing industry. And the idea of these lunchtime sessions is to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do right now in this situation where you're working from home and preparing you for the return back to work. So you have a whole new set of skills and thinking that's going to help you become more incredible than yesterday. Where are we today? What actions? Let me ask this question first of all to everyone that's here. If you've been in the previous sessions, what action, and you've seen the other videos, what actions have you taken so far from what we've talked about in the last two days? What have you put in place? What are you doing differently? What have you written down as a result of the previous two sessions? Let's see those in the chat box, in the questions box. For those that haven't, we're going to dive into this session. I'm going to give you a bit of a recap shortly, and then we're going to get some momentum. Started to think about my exit plan. Absolutely. Taking a stab at where I want to be in five years. Amazing. Still trying to work out my exit strategy. The fact that you're working it out right now, that's the key thing. Started working on my PDP with the concept is not a format, it's a way of thinking. Absolutely this. Written goals for myself for the next three months. Amazing, Chris. Thinking about the big goal, getting it bigger. So when you set your big goal, when you put it in place, ask yourself the question. When this happens, what does it enable me to do? And then that way, what we can do is start to see what comes after that moment. Because what happens is, is when you're setting a goal, it becomes like a conveyor belt. As you start to move towards it, it starts to evolve. So although you may achieve that goal, there'll be another goal that starts to form because you've achieved it. The faster that you work through or process this thinking and development, the quicker these goals start to, to increase and expand. Five-year plan started. Amazing, Gareth. Personal development planning. Does exactly what it says on the tin. It's personal. So we've got everyone here. Continuing the structure. God, we've got everything sorted. Just making sure the housekeeping's right. Yes, good. Continuing with our structure. So yesterday, we looked at the OAG. The overarching goal. This is what we started to think about. And we asked three questions to help us start designing that overarching goal. The first one was what fills us with pride? The second one, what creates excitement for us? And the third one, what are our values? Because when we understand what creates pride for us or what we've done that created pride or what we've done or we're planning that creates excitement, and what it what our values are and how we've then what we've contributed that have created or demonstrated these things we can start to get a real understanding of, of who and why we are 
because when you can see this you can start to be inspired you get inspiration once you have inspiration then you can use your imagination once you've applied your imagination then you can put into practice your innovation and those lights are bang on that right so bear with me it's not much better goodness me it's a bit better so once we've got the inspiration we can apply imagination and innovation when we start looking at those things then we can start building our over, uh, overarching goal they talk about necessity being the father of invention a phrase that you may have heard but the truth is inspiration is the mother that births all of this so when you tap into this because and you start looking at the things that have caused these sensations these emotions you can tap into that inspiration which creates this which then leads to this the thinking that creates action it's really important we get into this and we start to understand because this is where your purpose comes from this is what your purpose actually is and by doing the analytics on these things you can then start designing something that's actually in line with that purpose from a deeper point of view you may have heard me say this before you know the difference between motivation versus inspiration motivation is external now the double pay of overtime the packet of haribo for doing a good job all of those things but it's fleeting whereas inspiration is constant it's an energy it's an internal source that you can tap into at any given point in order to he says thank you very much ivan for reminding me appreciate it in order to create that thing that actually feels good that creates fulfillment so that you want to go after it because it's exciting and it's engaging that was the headline recaps number two what we want to do though is because this can be overwhelming and it can be big and, and it can seem too far away for us is we then want to break it down i'm going to dive onto a poll here because i'm interested to see out of this though before we start giving you the structures to break it down i want to find out when was the last time your leader spent time helping you with your plan so let's get let's have a look at this first before we start getting into the internal leadership first so we're going to launch this poll when was the last time your leader spent time with you crikey someone's already answered that. i'm not sure we even have an answer to that on the on the poll when was the last time your leader spent time with you to help you with your plan and one of the responses here was never not surprised so 40% 12 months plus, 10% 12, 30% six. We've got a few never, nevers, also never. Crikey, I'm, uh, I'm, part of me is not surprised regrettably. So 40% on here has said 12 months plus. I didn't put never on here as an option because I thought every leader would have done at some point. 10% 12 months, 30% six months, 20% or one month. So the majority is more than 12 months and a handful of people over here saying never. How does it feel when your leaders take that little interest in what you're actually doing? Light up the question box or the chat box. How does it actually feel when your leaders show that little interest in what you're doing? Whether you need it or not. It's a struggle shite and that's not my words it's someone else's words and number and get not a person absolutely ignored demotivated disheartened left out insignificant undervalued unhappy bang, demotivating it's not okay so as leaders so the people here that have leaders or, or have people in their charge in their gift um you know it's not your responsibility to run their personal development it is your responsibility to be interested in their personal development to ask them how they're doing are there any obstacles that maybe they need um, to have cleared so they can move forward faster or to have someone to bounce the ideas off of 
So if you feel like this about your leaders at whatever level you are in the business or in your, or in your organization, it doesn't matter. If you feel like that, is it okay to potentially have people in your teams that feel like that as well? And I know what the answer is. But the truth is that the people that maybe your leaders haven't been in a room with me having this sort of conversation to say how important it is or how it actually feels, they've never been shown how to have the conversation, how to design their own personal development plan so they don't know how to have that conversation with you because they don't know how to have it with themselves. Leadership development starts internally before you give it externally. You cannot lead yourself, you cannot lead anybody else. You cannot give more than you have yourself. So it's important we understand this. If you know how this feels, if you're aware of this, then it's important that you do this for other people. It is a reminder that it is my career and my responsibility. Absolutely this, Chris. It's absolutely this. This is your personal development, it is your responsibility, it's everybody's. But at the same time, people have never been shown how to fill their form in or to, to have the mindset to actually work on their own personal development because they're expecting somebody outside of them to tell them what to do. That's not how it works. Because your career development, your career trajectory, your outcomes, your overarching goal is yours, not somebody else's. So let's give you a couple of structures here to break this down. He says, looking at the time, oh, there's too much to cram into this. One of the first elements is when you're getting to this space is you wanna learn how to break some of this stuff down. In order to get here, start using some of the open questions. Again, you know, I've talked about it in this every session and I know some of you have already bought packets of them, is the coaching cards. We sell them on the website. They're a huge value for what you're actually getting, um, for the amount you're actually paying for them. Now, there are a series of questions in there that will just help you to think differently. You can use them on your, on your own to yourself. You can use them with your team and other people in your charge, and you can use the questions to ask them to help them develop their thinking. So we just start asking ourselves some open questions to break down the thinking. The first stage we wanna do how I break it down is, is in three categories, first of all. If we are setting up our personal development plan and we're doing it because we want to get promoted or we want to move into a different part, department, there's three aspects we need to be aware of if we're working inside an organization. The five key traits of the business so that you're aligned to the organizational vision, the, the values, whatever it is they hold important. What are the five key traits that that company, that this organization holds dearest that I need to make sure that I'm ticking, that I'm, I'm, I'm really clear on? Because if I'm not doing this, when I walk into an interview and a promotion, I'm not gonna be displaying or airing those values in, in a congruent and authentic way. Therefore, I'm making it more difficult for me to move forward. So this is the first thing. We break down the first um, section. What are the top five traits for the organization? The next box we want to be working on is the five traits for the role I'm in now. Because if you're not doing a good job where you are at this point in time, who's going to give you a promotion? Who's going to say, oh, you're doing a fantastic job over there. Let's give you a job over here because obviously that's working out really well. It's not good business sense. So what are the top five key things that I need to be getting right in this space right now? So I know I've got um, a sense of um, focus, certainty about myself so that I can present some of this content. The next five traits or elements is of the job that I wanna be going for. So, I'm working here in the organization, I'm getting this right. I'm doing my job here, I'm getting that part right for certain. But then the next part, which is the interesting bit, is am I doing or working on the elements now in the job that I wanna be in? Because in order to get the job, you have to be doing the job. And, and most of us know this when we think about it. If you go for a job interview and, and someone will say, can you give me an example of where you've done so and so and so and so? And what they're looking for is where you've given examples of where you're doing the job or have the experience they're looking for, because they want you to come in and hit the ground running. 
you know, at least walking, if not running before you get there. And by having done and got the experiences here while still doing the job that you're in, the interview is just a almost a box ticking exercise because you've already got the experience, you're already doing it and you're already adding value at that level. And what you're doing is opening the door so that actually you can walk in and say, yes, I'm doing this. So we start to work in these five spaces. We've got a clear view of company, current, future. And you're working in those three spaces. Breakdown number two, point three on this. is we then want to start turning some of these elements into 100 day plans. And actually we want three of these. So this overarching goal could be three years, five years, 10 years, whatever, great, fantastic, it's right over there. But what am I doing now to get the understanding? Okay, so I'm getting a viewpoint of where I am. In, the, in close proximity, a little bit, you no, know, the here and now, and a little bit over there. But then we want to break it down into a hundred days. Nine, I did ninety to a hundred day chunks of time where we can focus our attention. And in this, we then start documenting the actions that we're going to take. Now, you, I, most of us in this room right now having this conversation as let's see, let's see who here right now is in a full-time job and I, I yes full-time job a couple of yes to come in yeah 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 yes 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 me yeah good when we break this down you cannot give you know, you can't work on a project for a whole day. You cannot work on your own personal development for a whole day simply because you've got your own responsibilities and expectations and obligations that are sitting inside this for seven and a half, eight hours a day, depending on what your job is you're doing. So as we start to see some of these traits and elements we need to be working on, we can then start to break down what we want to be doing or aspects we need to be working on. I'm going to take it up a level, sorry. So we break it down into the three 100 days. And we start to give these things headlines as in kind of a theme of aspects we need to be working on. So what you may find is you, you may have an R&D element or you may have a learning element or um, a networking element. And these, what these will be is they will be your titles for your 100 days. And you'll, you'll see certain parts you need to be working on it in order to move you towards where you want to be at the end of the 12 months. So the idea is that at the end of 12 months, you want to be in a position where you're moving towards your overarching goal, that you're taking steps to make that happen. You break it down into the 100 day chunks and each one of those chunks will have a title but you will find there's a chronological order to making that year goal happen i realized that i had to backtrack slightly there is everyone with me and what i'm saying let me just check this right now good 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 i missed a step and i had to come out but it's good so we take the OAG, we, we, we chop it up. What are we going to do for the next 12 months? And then we break that 12 months down into 100 day chunks, three of them. What's the reason we break it down into three 100 day chunks? <sighs> Conscious of time. Last question before we get into some of the, before I um, give you some elements to this. When is the best time to set goals? When is the best time, do you think, yesterday, <laughs> when is the best time to set goals, do you think? When I'm open to them, it's a good shout. 
no better time than the present, absolutely, any time, but before you achieve the current one, absolutely, keep the momentum, ongoing process, absolutely. When I make the decision, good. So there's some good stuff in here. The common misnomer though that we have to work with with goal setting is, the time they tell you to set goals and do all of this stuff is New Year's Eve, you know, is in December. And it is what I've come to realize recently, the problem with December is, if you're not on holiday, everybody else is. So if you're doing work in these elements here and you're sending out emails or trying to get some uh, you know, elements of learning done, if you're not on holiday, somebody else is. So it takes two weeks to get an answer and then you're in Christmas and then you're not gonna get a response. So de December in itself is challenging uh, for, for networking and working with other people. Yes, you can still do your learning, but you need to be conscious that it's gonna be a slower month. Then right in the middle of winter when it's you know the shortest days and it's the coldest and it's the most miserable and all of those things, people tell you to set your goals at New Year's Eve. And then you wonder why 21 days later that you know you haven't followed through on your resolutions, you've broken all you and you've fallen down on all your goals and you're not going where you want to be. And then we get to the third week of, of January and Blue Monday, which again was just a marketing tool, you ended up you've got more month than money and you're miserable because you haven't done anything that you set out to do and you haven't even got to the end of January. So when I say about the three blocks of 100, it's about using the time from around mid-February onwards through until kind of the, the, the end of November period. And we use these blocks of time to focus our energy and our efforts every single day. Now, when we have work, we're not gonna be able to spend seven and a half hours doing this one task. If we're working, we give ourselves one hour a day. It might be your lunch break. It might be on the way home from work. It might be when you get home from work that you, you factor in eight o'clock. So the children have gone to sleep and it's eight o'clock. I'm gonna do an hour's work on my own development. But you break out 100 days of one hour actions in each of these sections. So you're giving yourself one hour of focus attention to get into what it is you need to be doing that's moving you forward every single day to that 12 month objective that's moving you towards the OAG. I definitely tried to squeeze too much into today's session. Conscious of time. So let's look on the questions box. What has been useful from what I've covered so far today? Three blocks of 100, good. The five traits, absolutely. And we can just break this down, uh, Gareth, you know, the five traits, company values, job necessities, future role where I'm going, and start doing the job that you want to move into. Three blocks of 100, yeah. Three groups of traits, fantastic. All of it, thank you, five, 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 yeah. Five traits, good. Three lots of 100, breaking it down to little steps of earlier deal, deal with, yes way of continuously combining personal development with day job absolutely it's amazing when you go and sit down on your lunch and you work in a big organization how many people are playing games or texting the person on the other side of the table and actually how we utilizing the time we've got whether we're driving home listening to audiobooks listening to a podcast using our lunch to to add elements to essays and degrees that we're working on um oag shall fill me with yeah absolutely your OAG, when you get, when you know, that thing you want to, it's about understanding that job that you can do that gives you that sense of pride and excitement more than 80% of your day. It exists, you just have to work it out. I miss first two webs, so recap, very helpful, particularly about inspiration. Adriana, it's good to see you here again. Really appreciate it. Those videos, they're on YouTube now. Go and watch them. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed those sessions as much as I did today. Uh, traits for next level, sectioning themes, absolutely 100 days. Inspiration and imagination gives in, yeah, absolutely gives innovation. Going back to the beginning, what the best way to create reminders for when you pick it up again? Going back to the beginning, what are the best ways to create the reminders for when you pick it up again? Is this a place for forms or and mind maps? Yes, I'm currently working on the form to help log all some of this stuff. I have a very kind of fun foundational level, fundamental, basic level of, of Excel sheet that's covering this. And we're, we're building a document at the moment that's going to give us some extra elements to this um, just to make it super clean so you've got that stuff to fill in. 
and then that helps keep your mindset on track because it's not um, it's not the form it's the mindset that makes the form work the mind comes first thinking it was always the thought that precedes the action um, one here you know suggestion from Darren is using outlook reminders or book one-to-ones with someone absolutely get this stuff in what gets scheduled gets done we're starting to get some of this structure. I know we're getting into a little bit of the technical elements of it. Mindset first, thinking, activity. Brilliant, mindset that makes the form work. Absolutely, this every single time. We don't want the process to run us. We want to use it to, its, our, to our advantage. Questions. What questions have you got for me right now about what I just downloaded for 20 minutes with you? What questions have you got for me this very moment? And that tea is stone cold now. Waiting for those questions to come in. One thing that I will talk about a bit tomorrow, and I'm going to headline with you to this now, is when you set these 100 days up, you will find that there is a chronological order to what happens in these things. So when you're setting the 100 days up, for example, um, previously I ran a 16-week personal development program online. Now, um, in order to make that happen, what I did was I needed to do my r and I needed to do my research, and then I needed to test it with an individual to see if it was the right content, and then I needed to launch it. So there's a chronological order to each three, all three of those steps. You can't launch a product that you haven't researched. You can't test a product that you haven't built. So you'll find a running order. And it's the same when we're looking for, say, a new job or we're going for the next step in our career. Well, actually, what are the running orders of these 100 days? Is it, you know, that I need to learn about that role? So I need to go and speak to people in order to understand what these five traits are. Okay, so I need to go and find out they're teaching me this stuff. Then networking. Okay, what, what's the next stage? What comes after this? Questions starting to come in and suggest using competency frameworks to identify. Absolutely. So we at um, Sticky Learning at MBM, we have the competency frameworks. So if there's certain elements that you need to be working on, we have a list of these. Um, we will share these in the email afterwards and you can see what those elements of areas are that we can then support on. So if you see there's certain key from the virtual classrooms, from the coaching, from working with me, either one-to-one -one or in group environments with your team, we can work through those and we can really build them up. Is there an inconsistency in working on aspects sequentially are, are, um, the learnings versus opportunity to develop them, crop, develop them cropping up? Um, as a couple, There is, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit tomorrow, is that con context switching. So making sure we're working on one task. It doesn't mean, though, that if you're working in one space, so you're working in your R&D phase, and all of a sudden something becomes, for me, becomes aware in my launch aspect, that I completely ignore it. But what I do, I call it octopus thinking. I send out one of my tentacles, I grab that idea and I hold on to it. So at the right time, when I'm in that, that phase, that element, I can bring that stuff in and, and utilise it. But I'm also aware of kind of the distraction as your brain starts to kick in. Oh, I'm learning this, and all these other ideas and all this other learning comes in, and you become overwhelmed because you've gone down 15 different rabbit holes in 37 different ways. So when we work on the 100 days, we want to try and sit in that space of focus for as long as possible until we ticked all those boxes. I'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow though. Um, why is there such a lack of interest in people with development from management? Because no one did it to them. Simple as that. We do unto others as was done unto us predominantly in leadership, which is you know, one of the reasons I get so agitated and, and, and emotional about this is when we're working with people, is you know, leaders and managers will do to you that was done to them. And if their managers and leaders didn't have any uh, leadership development and they didn't have any when they were promoted, you're not gonna get anything from them. You know, it, we, the, they, all they will do is accentuate the gaps that existed in their know-how because they don't want to go and face into that learning because it feels uncomfortable. And they have to acknowledge that they don't know something or they haven't got all the answers. And people don't like to feel like that. Um, again, it's why I get so emotional about this stuff and I'm so engaged in it because 
I want to help change the, the world of leadership through these sorts of conversations. The, the reason that you're here in this room having this conversation mean that you, means that you now know something different and it's not for you to then go and bash people with a stick of, well, I know how to do a PDP, you're wrong and da 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 da. No, you now know something different so that when you go back into your own headspace, you can develop yourself, which means you can develop other people. That's the importance of what we do. I have one last question before we, 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 before we leave this space. What would happen if your team was having this sort of training with me right now? What would happen in your business, in your business area, if we were to have a group conversation? What do you think would happen to your team if we were to have a group conversation about personal development planning? Penny dropping. What do you think would happen to your business results if we had a session that we've covered this week and we haven't even finished with your team improve communication, cohesion as a whole, and better self-awareness, absolutely. When all of a sudden you've got all your people in your team and they're looking at the five traits of what they're doing right now, I see how this links to where I am going. All of a sudden I need to be the best version of myself because if I'm not being the best version of myself now, I am not gonna be creating the best version of what I see in the future. And we can start to build this stuff in, and then people start to put their plans in because no one in your team is always gonna stay in your team. The idea is that they develop and move. But in order for them to develop and move, they have to be the best version of themselves in the job that they're doing right now so that they can move. As you start doing this, your results improve. We'd become a better team, excuse me, and the veterans would have a better experience when they come to the hospital. Absolutely. Absolutely this. People doing the jobs they would be doing now would do a better job where they are now because they've got an understanding of where that is taking them. Rather than feeling like they're being told what to do, they're actually living up to their own expectations of what they're capable of doing and they're starting to live into their potential and their purpose. Because they're looking for things that fill them with pride, they're looking for things that excite them, they're looking for ways to display their values. Win-win. Thank you very much for today. I hope it's been useful. I'm aware that kind of my brain was going a little bit with the technical stuff here. I wanted to give as much of this as possible to you. We've got the link down there for the coaching cards. A couple of other things to bring into. One of the, remember to, tomorrow's session, it is available. Please click on the link, book yourself in. If you're not booked in for tomorrow, get booked in. Make sure you're getting up to date with the emails and the links for whatever reason. If you can um, attend, attend. If you need to watch the replay, watch the replay. It's there, but if you can be there live, you get to talk to me, interact with me, talk to me uh, and ask questions. The second thing is virtual classrooms. We've got the virtual classrooms available. If we can help you, click on the links, have a look at the virtual classrooms. Finally, if you want to bring me into a room to have a conversation about personal development, you want me to help, the up, um, help you to up the game of your teams and get these results and embed some of this thinking, mindset, uh, skill set and heart set, because this is important to me, into your businesses, let us know. We are here to help you. We're here to help to develop you and, and help your guys be the best version of themselves. Thank you for a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day four. And we're going to start breaking down some of this technical, a little bit of neuroscience, a little bit of mindset stuff to keep the daily action going. Thank you very much, everyone. Look, have a lovely rest of your day. Any questions come up, you know where we are. Please ask. Really appreciate it.